Reports are just coming in of an explosion at Liverpool Street Station here in London. The blast that ripped through Madrid's early morning commuter train sent blood and metal flying. Ambulances rushed more than a thousand wounded to city hospitals and the government set up centres for people to identify the bodies of missing loved ones. Horror struck again when a bomb exploded on a rush hour subway train near the European Union headquarters. Since 2001, more than 1,900 attacks have been carried out against public transportation systems globally, resulting in 4,000 deaths, 14,000 injuries. The, the, the attacks on metro stations, on rails. I know what would happen, God forbid, if what we see happening in European nation after European nation were to happen here in the United States. I don't want to be able to have people say, I told you so. We need to get the job done and protect surface transportation. We're going to start seeing more attacks or attempted attacks on mass transit rail systems. Uh, it's too attractive a target for terrorists because it's uh, an opportunity to inflict a lot of casualties in spaces where uh, people tend to gather in dense crowds. And it's also an opportunity to uh, inflict damage on critical infrastructure. And if you look at the security posture that we have in place now, it's not sufficient because we are not performing the sort of detailed uh, screening that takes place in aviation environments. Mass transit security is a global problem. We are no less vulnerable here than they are overseas. These are environments where you have a very high level of foot traffic. You have an unstructured crowd with many points of entry that are scattered over a large area. You have an environment where people can readily bring in bags or heavy coats, many things to conceal a potentially dangerous item. This highlights the importance of developing tools that can assist the security staff on site to ensure that our systems stay as secure as possible. Our task is clear. We need a way to safely detect explosive threats on people and in their bags, and we have to do this without physically searching them or impacting their flow through the transit system. Currently, there are no solutions to solve this challenging problem, and this is why the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate has a program to mitigate the explosive threat to surface transportation. The Surface Transportation Explosive Threat Detection Program is working in collaboration with the Surface Transportation System end users and our stakeholders, as well as our partners at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory and MIT Lincoln Labs to close the surface transportation security gap through innovative technologies that are designed to work together and provide a layered approach to security throughout the transportation system. Basically, we're taking a curb to platform approach to security. Curb to platform sensing is the idea that we are going to distribute sensors at various points from the perimeter of the facility to the platform. So from the time you step out on the cab to the time you get on a train or a bus, there are sensors that are keeping track of, of subjects in the system. This does a few things for us. First, it allows us to get multiple looks of a subject for better detection. Second, it makes it more difficult for a subject to evade the sensing systems. If a subject knew that all of our sensors were, say, only at the front door of a facility, then he knows he only needs to defeat the sensors at that spot. And finally, it recognizes that there are many security environments that we must protect in a mass transit system. Here at ST, we're developing a number of tools, among them a video algorithm capable of automatically detecting bags left behind and tagging individuals who left those bags. We're also developing a suite of video forensic tools that allow video surveillance systems to work more effectively and efficiently. Today we are at New Carrollton Metro Station. We are uh, testing some of our camera algorithms by placing bags in a variety of locations. If you have a, a fairly well-performing commercial algorithm uh, that alerts maybe only uh, 60 times an hour or once a minute, when you multiply that by the 50,000 or so uh, video cameras in a, in a mass transit system, uh, the number of, uh, of false alerts is actually quite overwhelming. It's inconceivable that even a fully staffed operations center is going to be able to field that many events over the course of a day. We're looking at a false alert rate that's uh, appreciably lower than what's commercially available and basically baked into the, uh, the infrastructure and the video analytics and the video management systems that uh, presently exist. The FOVIA program allows us to be able to identify a package that's been left behind and then to figure out who left it behind and then start to track that person and to determine whether or not 
this is a threatful situation and then to deploy proper resources to keep the people safe. So we're helping make existing video surveillance systems more efficient, more effective by giving users tools that help them get through the video faster. One of the tools within Fovea is a tool that we call Jump Back and it lets a user highlight an abandoned object, simply draw a box around it, and jump back to when that object first appeared. And from there, the user can investigate what are the circumstances around it. So for instance, um, it's jumped back to when this person left the bag. We can actually begin to bookmark the person in the video and follow them as they move throughout the station. So here we're actually piecing together information from different video cameras. Now once a user actually follows the person throughout the station and, and um, understands where they've come from, where they've gone to, they could then reconstruct that video and stitch all of those pieces together into one final video. So one task that often takes a really long amount of time is simply just reviewing video. So imagine you need to review 12 hours of video from the night before. You could watch it and fast forward, but we found that you can only really speed that up by a factor of 10 before things start flying by too fast. So we've developed a tool called Summarization. The video summarization functionality within Fovea is a very important tool for us. What it allows us to do is scan hours and hours of video in just a short period of time. We had an incident here at Amtrak where it took us two full man days to identify exactly what happened. When we ran it through the tool, it was able to do it in just a matter of hours. Fovea acts as a force multiplier. The analytics is a, just a simple, great way to leverage the infrastructure and the manpower to get the security that we require. And Fovea allows me to do that. We're also investing in standoff threat detection systems using complementary parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. These systems will serve as a key component of the layered screening concept. This is the centimeter wave array that we're developing here at APL uh, as a part of our layered threat detection approach. These would be incorporated into the walls, you'd be going down a hallway. People can just walk in front of this. This images them, but at such a, a blurry level that most people would not consider this to be particularly invasive. It's only the very large things that, you know, hey, that looks like a rifle. That looks like an explosive so that an operator will see the people walking by the array and the large false colored red blob that is says he's concealing something. The power and the frequencies that we're emitting are the same as put out by your Wi-Fi. This will not harm you in any way. These are lower than exposures that you will get from your own cell phone. Our concept is to use a low-cost system like a centimeter wave system as the initial layer of defense, identifying potential items of interest. Then we can use a millimeter wave system as our next layer, providing a more detailed view of potential threat items. Both layers working in a safe way that maintains the traveling public's privacy. This system is a prototype standoff microwave imager. It's a panel that's placed on a wall or in a corridor or perhaps on the ceiling. The idea here is that if you come in proximity of the unit with a concealed bomb or rifle, it's going to be able to see it. Microwave sensing can complement fovea by providing information that fovea doesn't have. So you can imagine a scenario where fovea alerts us to the fact that somebody's dropped a bag and walked away. Now, if that's all we know, we don't know if the bag's empty or whether we need to call in a bomb tech to check things out. Microwave sensing could tell us if the bag's empty or if it's full of metal or perhaps if it has some other suspicious item inside. That'll allow us to tailor our response to save resources, save time, and keep everybody safe. A passenger enters a subway system. There's a microwave scanner that's able to detect something suspicious inside that person's bag. The system then will cue through video surveillance a tag and track process where that person is tracked between multiple cameras in order to gather additional observations through other scanners. And then all that information is assembled and entered into a model that can decide whether there's enough evidence to cue a security personnel to intervene. So the layered sensing architecture would be a system that's constantly updating the risk level that it observes. So from the moment somebody steps into a facility and it starts collecting observations, it's going to have some assessment of what it thinks the risk level is. But as that person proceeds through the subway system and additional observations are collected, the system is going to update that risk level. Because we can design panels of different shapes and sizes, that gives us the opportunity to place them on walls near the entryway or near the subway platform. We can place it on poles, in some cases on ceilings, 
We could even potentially integrate it into the fare gates that people walk through as they, they enter the systems. We're developing this technology for use in the surface transportation environment because it's our most difficult security challenge. However, it will also have applications to other parts of the Homeland Security critical infrastructure and can provide enhanced security at airports and bus and ferry terminals. It can also be used to monitor events that take place at stadiums, convention centers, schools, and to enhance security anywhere we have unstructured crowds. The mass transit environment presents daunting security challenges, and we have very well-trained and dedicated law enforcement and security staff on site. However, they can't be in all places at all times, and that's why it's critical that we develop tools like this that can act as a force multiplier and cue suspicious situations and help them ensure security in our mass transit facilities. The reduction in time is what I'm looking forward to. That, that they used to take us 20 hours takes us 10 minutes. And then your real-time information. So imagine that officers on the scene, they want to know who they should be looking for. This system allows us to tell them that almost instantaneously. Amtrak has a very good relationship with ST. Um, we volunteered to be a test bed for the video surveillance analytics technology they're testing, uh, and we're very proud to do it. Uh, we're very satisfied and happy with the performance of it so far, and we will be rolling this technology out to our larger stations for a more detailed pilot here shortly in the future. This operational environment is by far the most challenging from an explosive threat detection standpoint, and a focused long-term investment as well as a coordinated program working with TSA and our surface transportation stakeholders will allow us to continue to make the breakthroughs we need in achieving our goal of better protecting the nation's surface transportation systems and the traveling public. The threat isn't gone. People are plotting right now, right now against this country.